So because of the whole bleed thing with Cassad, fair play to Huxy. He saw the meme angle. He has leveled up that aspect of the G2 meta of social media. He saw the angle. Look, fair play. If you know like WWE and that, like wrestling promotion, that is the best angle to do that meme on. Of like, I saw the Cassad. I was watching you know, the design from the team or whatever. Where yeah, you, fair play. You are using his shit against him. That's what I would do or any other analyst would do. Like it's a good angle, but it actually just made me think again of that topic. And one thing I've always wanted to do is, obviously on my shows that I have with with Kassad, we've talked many times about Huxley and G2 and Nico and all that stuff. But actually, in general, Yanko, I notice you haven't really like, weirded in on that topic too much. Like You will talk, evaluate G2, obviously, and how they're doing and all that stuff. But I actually wanted to know, where do you come down on the essentially the Huxley question? Because the Huxley question to me goes at this, Yanko. It's not, is he a decent in-game leader? I mean, you can't win trophies that he's won if you had total shits and you just do nothing and you really just die in the server. Like that, that's obviously a ridiculous straw man. But the question to me goes at this, Yanko. It's essentially like, I'll give you the analogy. I'll give you a football analogy. It would be like if someone asks, should Eric Ten Hag be the coach of Man United? Right? He's actually already shown he must have coaching skills and he's already done an all right job of Man United. Right. The question is, though, if someone's a, a big Man United fan, they think Man United should be number one, then they're going to say, no, he hasn't done a good enough job. But if someone's maybe more of a pragmatist, they might say, actually, he's doing an all right job. You know, maybe we stick with him for now and like consider the circumstance. So where do you actually come down on this? Because obviously the question I feel like that infects this is what people think about Nico, because if people want Nico to win the major today, they're going to want him to have the best possible IGL. So where do you come down on the big like is Huxley the right IGL for G2 angle? Where do you come down on this, Yanko? I think, first of all, when you said football, I thought you were going to use the good football sure. analogy. You know, not this... Many actors doesn't follow this. that stuff, mate. I had to make it, you know... <laughs> that goes from a European. I Why is a European making this reference? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I know, I know America has the best everything. No, but uh, I, I think the question would be, you know, would you ever think, like, Trent Dilfer can win a Super Bowl? As, oh, of you course, know, right. Your team could win a Super Bowl with Trent Dilfer as quarterback. Well, if you have the Baltimore Ravens 2000 defense, then sure you can. So for me, it's from the very get-go, people have been very quick to attack Hooksy because of his individual performances, oh, right, gosh. and the lack thereof. But as anyone very well knows, it's really about how the team functions as a whole. And you will certainly remember back when... Zeus was first removed from the team in Navi, right? And Seized came in. I think Seized was in gaming for a yes. Simple came in and all this stuff. They were worse. They were worse than, when they, than they were yes. before, even though Simple was already coming in as one of the best players in the world. I can't remember like around that time where he was in the HLTV rankings, but certainly on the way up. And it's because whether it's the in-game leader can't do a good enough job or the roles don't mesh as well or there isn't like a person who is going to sacrifice his individual game for the for the betterment of the team and so on and so forth right so for me from the very beginning it was like hey let's give the guy some time i mean yeah, he yeah. was in copenhagen flames before this they were solid but he never had to deal with you know the spotlight of being on a tier one team an org as big as g2 with so many fans uh, having players on your team like Nico, who are extremely good players, but also have, you know, a mind of their own and have things that they want to do and their opinions and can be stubborn uh, at times with those opinions. So those are all things you need to get used to. And I know in talking to Hooksy and even when, when he was our guest on the on the podcast, he was saying, you know, that was so overwhelming for him at the beginning because, oh, you know, in Flames, he would try to reply to every single DM to people. You know, right. Like, uh, right. And then it's just... It's, it's impossible, like, when you join, like, a team like G2. So, for me, it was always like, hey, the team has, you know, Nico. It has uh, Hunter on it, right? Monesi. Like, there's firepower on that team. They don't need another guy to frag. They need a guy who's going to maximize those other players on the team and then not be a liability where they he is the reason they can't win games, you know? So, when you look at their games and, and, and some of the tournaments where they failed for example the rio major they didn't even qualify the paris major they couldn't uh, make it into the playoffs even it was a bit of a collapse there as well to cut the, the answer a little bit short in a sense for me i don't think it's like hooksy is the problem in a sense of he's too bad of an individual player or he doesn't know how to call on a high level i think the problem with him in particular was all the pressure and he didn't really know how to handle it and he was putting too much pressure on his 
on himself. And he was putting all the blame on himself and they would fail because of all this. Ah, you have Nico and you have this. And it's like Nico's last major and all this bullshit. Oh, which, sure. First of all, Nico doesn't care about in that sense, you know, for the team. And no one like was discussing that or putting that pressure on him or on anyone else on the team. I think G2 just at times has had the same problem of dealing with that pressure in some of the big games whether it's as a team whether it's individually Nico in some big games until you know they won Katowice and then we saw him pop off in Cologne right and and Katowice and Cologne are two example of, examples of when G2 is on point I don't even necessarily want to say playing their A game but just when they're not choking and that pressure isn't getting to them and they're not making like a thousand of silly mistakes okay. mistakes are going to happen you know they can be a really good team with those Five players, okay, they determined that JKS was the guy to to replace. And from, you know, Hooksy's interview and all of that stuff, it seems like it comes down to there's too many space takers on the team and not enough space creators, in a sense, which doesn't necessarily mean aggressive, passive player, just guys who are going to sacrifice themselves so the other guy can make a play and get a kill. So we'll see if this change with Nexa, that's what it's supposed to do. But right. I think... It's also you have to look at like who else can you get in a sense. Even well, actually, time... this would be my spinner. Let me spin it to this way, and we'll bring many yeah. again afterwards. Uh, the other question would be this, Yanko. Like you've done a sort of a, like I said, you've done the more pragmatic approach there. Like if you have one and you look at what they do have, essentially they do have something to consolidate, There's something to keep, like a build off. But my question would be this: the obvious angle would be like it's a fair question, but if someone says this isn't good enough, you pretty much always, if you say this isn't good enough, should have a solution or something that you can improve. Otherwise. You just tell the person the same problem you have, which is you don't know what to solve. So if if the option was Yanko, they could have got, say, I'm purely speculating here, let's say like Snappy was available. Should they have done like that move in your opinion? Is it not as obvious? It's tricky because you need to look at, G. you look also a bit longer term, right? I feel at some point in his career, Nico becomes an in-game leader, right? I don't know when that's going to happen, shouldn't happen as long as he can play on a really high level but he has the personality and from the time that i've coached him and he was an in-game leader in 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 face he has really good instincts and he can do the job right you know you obviously don't want him to do it now i know they could have they could have changed them for someone during the last summer break right and that could have been someone who you know you're thinking okay this guy is an opportunity but you just it would still be a risk, right? I, I guess at the end of the day, it's you've seen how good you can be. And it comes down to, do you think the, the, the things that are holding you back are fixable or not, right? And I think it came down to the G2 feels they're fixable because the, only, the, the one thing they're lacking is consistency with that <coughs> roster, you know? And with Hooksy at the helm. They win Cologne, they go to Gamers 8, where they're sort of, they, they kind of, Throw, throw the game or let the game slip away from them against Vitality. If they beat Vitality there, they play Ants in another best of five final, you know, right after beating them in Cologne. You're thinking they're the favorites in yeah. that game. If, if they win two tournaments in a row, right, G2 with that extra confidence, who knows what happens from that point on. But, you know, there's so many teams that, histories that are filled with what oh, with sure? Yes. So I think not to go too long here, one other thing is obviously, is he a liability individually? In, or like, can you abuse him in the server and just beat G2 by targeting hooks you're finding these weak spots? And I think one of the things that we might be seeing on some maps like Mirage, B-Site, it's, it's your hooks, it's your Kerrigan and stuff. I think it, you might be better off just putting the in-game leader in rotation always, right? Because he has to have a fight probably on his opponent's terms when he's the anchor. But if he's the rotation, he can use his, obvious all the preparation that you do and the, in -ga the game sense and everything you've done to put yourself in the right position or to support your better player who's actually the anchor, right? And also Kerrigan, for example, who can also be very inconsistent with his performances. One of the things he does a lot is just, we, you know, like quote-unquote stupid stuff like that just picks a timing does a lot of timing plays just yes. walks through a smoke runs through a smoke right and at that point he catches you off guard doesn't matter if it's simple or if it's me on the other side you know i'm gonna be dead because he just timed me on the play so sure. maybe just utilizing that a little bit because on t side hooks he does a lot of 
sacrificing, right? He's rarely in positions where he needs, you know, in clutches or anything like that. So it comes a little bit down to the CT side. So for me, I think it's all workable, right? It's just about mentally getting over some of those hurdles and playing with the sort of freedom that we've seen them display at World Finals and Katowice and Cologne. Um, yeah, I wanted to bounce out on a couple of points. And fucking um, ban Vertigo. Sorry. <laughs> that, that's going to that's be on the list. You, you're talking about the, the positions and rotation. Yeah. I think that's what Vitality did with Apex, right? They realized Apex could not be an anchor. They tried for a while. He played ramp. He played B on Mirage. And then he himself said, fuck it. It's not going to work like that. Give me movement where I can actually have a couple of fights on my own terms. So that's a good example. Uh, we say... We don't know what would happen if G2 won two tournaments in a row. Well, they did that in the beginning of the year, and we still saw them crash after that. It was World Finals straight into Katowice. Uh, was it 16 or whatever, 17 series in a row, one from G2. So they had this moment, and they kind of let it go. The problem that I have, and this is very much hypothesis and, and from the outside suggestions, but when, when those the confidence for Hooksy towards himself and from the team towards him become an issue, actually, because there is such thing as being too selfless, putting yourself out there all the time, taking all the risks, being the meat shield in front of the attack. There comes a point where you need to have a certain degree of confidence in what you can do individually, not only so that you can play good, but also make the right decisions. I'm, I always go back to the same example. I've, I've seen Apex and Vitality struggle individually, having horrible numbers, making terrible decisions. That was when Vitality was struggling. And you could just see he was out of oxygen. Like he just didn't have the lucidity. The game was going too fast for him. He was making mistakes all around, and that was reflected in his game plan. So I do wonder to what extent it would be beneficial for G2 to set up Hooksy just a little bit. Like, let's give him a couple of moments where he can feel comfortable, a couple of good kills. He gets into his own game, and then the calling is fine. I just think he has too many moments where you can feel like he, he's lost the light at the end of the tunnel. He just, he just doesn't know anymore. He's basically become a pawn, and he's getting fragged left and right. And then the second, like the afterwave effect of that is, if I'm a player on G2 and I'm looking to my left or my right and I see Hooksy, I'm thinking, bro, like, come on. Like, you, you, gotta, you gotta give me something. You gotta, we, got, we have to have the, the idea that you're gonna get this frag when it comes to you. And then when that doubt starts creeping in, I think this is where things get a little uncomfortable. And this is where we start seeing G2 let the pressure get to them, overplay, overcompensate for us, because you have to have a certain degree of, of assurance and confidence that things are gonna be all right. And that also means knowing your teammate are gonna get your frag. So I think. Probably Hooksy should try and set himself up just a little bit more. Even though it sounds counterintuitive, when you have Monesi and Nico, you think, hell, these two should be set up and that's it. I think they would benefit from putting him in a better, some of these positions at least so he does not find himself in, in Apoxia when he's playing. I think some, some of these plays are like depending him and Nico who has the better spawn, for example, for banana control. So some of those stuff is the same, whether it's one player or the other, right? The utility that comes behind is the same and all that stuff. And we've seen him sometimes have good plays in that sense. One thing that also I, th I think it's important is now the coming of Taz as well and the change in the in the coaching department because Swanee, you know, they stuck with what they got when they had that initial success. And he's a great guy and I'm sure he helped like with in-game stuff and this and that, but he is a sort of a person, even just personality wise, you know, your assistant coach, your guy who's like can help you a lot with the uh, X's and O's, but not really that head coaching figure with the sort of authority you need to have to run a team like that, you know? And I, and I feel like someone like Taz, who obviously we know is, you know, not a, a shy guy or anything, incredibly experienced, very vocal, uh, smart when it comes to the game too, ha has done it all, done it on a high level, dealt with that pressure. He's been in Hooks' shoes, literally, you know? So I think that could prove to be a big help to Hooks in sort of how do you deal with these things and just telling him, you know, hey, don't worry about this, fuck this, this is your job, right? This is what you need to focus on and don't let anything distract you for that. I'm looking forward to seeing, I think Taz can have a good amount of impact on this G2 lineup. Yeah, what I would say is I actually probably am going to do like a solo video on my channel about this exact topic because basically I might even be called to it like, yeah, so it catch like the hooksy principle because I actually think this is the best example I've ever seen. I've referenced this on a past episode, Maniac. It's the best example I've ever seen of a case where like objectively, obviously it does work. He has won championships. They've been in position to win championships many times over. But I sort of have essentially, it's it's the idea of like, can you maximize it further? Was Is there actually a better 
essentially is the perfect the enemy of the good in this scenario. I, if I reached for a better lineup and put Snappy in, would it make the team worse? Maybe actually somehow, maybe actually Huxley having a lack of an ego allows those players to play awesome in their own way. You know, there's, you never know the dynamics. So essentially, what I might study is, I think it's the best example of one where even if you think he shouldn't be, it's probably borderline. It's a bit like, it's the IGL version of what I'm going to do a similar video about Blame F, where I know loads of fans think he is just like, oh, it's not a real star, he's just baiting and like killing eco fraggers. It's like, bro, there aren't that many eco frags in a game. Like, he's obviously just a really good player. You just don't like his fucking style of play. Like, you have to acknowledge he's a fucking, like, you can't put up the numbers. There are, the point is, there aren't enough fucking people with a knife out in the in a random game account strike for Blame F to put those numbers up, guys. And spoiler, if you watch him on CT side, how does he make the ecos all come to him? Do they just get magnetically drawn to him? No, he just holds his spot and he's just a defensive player who does shoot everyone. So, similarly, I have to give something to Huxy. It, it, it's one thing when he just won the last world. I was with Kassad on that one, like, ah, it's a banana cup, who gives a fuck? When you win Kanavitsi, that gives me a little bit of pause. When you win Kanavitsi and Cologne, I've got to at least give you your fucking due. Like, you obviously have done something pretty good. Like, there's not many IGLs in history have done that if people don't know. Yes, the majors are a massive black stain. You have to put that on there. Obviously, they've got to level that up. I, in fact, there's what I would say. If I had to say what I think a reasonable... Um, trajectory for for Huxley and G2 is, it would be this. Okay, I'll say in the general circuit, you've done a good enough job, but you have to deliver at the major now. If you fail a major or two more, then, then that's the sort of trigger maybe I would use to say, let's try someone else. Let's bring someone else in. That, that feels fair, I think. And you know also, like, it's not incidental that the major is where they failed. Why majors are the highest pressure environment that oh, we course. have in counter-strike right so then and that you you be heard it from them you know that's where they choked right like it got to them they, they were thinking too much about it they were playing not to lose they were playing scared too much and you know first it happened when it didn't qualify for rio they sort of had a talk about it and, and that's after that they got better but i think just one interesting thing as well is like i had this question before too so for example duncan would you rather have a team that can, you know, go and win a tournament, but then also fail at a tournament, not get out of groups, or would you rather have a team or be on a team where, like, you're always up there, like, you're, you're a contender, you're, like, in the playoffs, you're, like, semifinals, maybe finals sometimes, but you can never just really lift that trophy. You know, the problem is, you, I mean, the obvious, GM, for example, yeah. what team would you rather? Have? Well, the obvious example would be, would I rather have G2's lineup or Heroics? Because those mm. are the two teams. They're yeah. all like, you know, the odd blast, but no one really cared. Like, yeah. the problem is, I'm pretty sure everyone would pick the one where you can win the Kalorna kind of eats here, right? Like, exactly. as much as in theory, you're a better team to be consistent. Like, you want to actually have, like, essentially, the one thing I'll give Huxy is this. When it all came together, there's a reason his team won the tournament. Now, people might be cynical and go, they just fragged out. By the way, even that's unfair. Because I will say, Yanko, one thing that triggers me in sports like the NFL or the NBA is when people see like really great players like they do is to Phil Jackson they just go yeah but that's just because he had like Kobe and Shaq it's like mate there's other people had these players that didn't win just having the best player doesn't you don't really there's no real like you do know that is a meme like Nico go kill like that's that's not actually <laughs> like a strat by the way I will say though there's one thing I will shade in that's one reason I do reserve a little bit of skepticism always even when they win about Huxy which is one thing I don't think people actually give Nico credit for is dude as a rifler Nico Nico's almost like the device of rifling, where if people know, I think they get the sense now, now that they took apart Astralis, he wasn't just an opera in Astralis, he was almost like an IGL opera, like he would kind of call his own play as it were, call the other opponent opera's play, and then move himself, and then it's almost like Glade didn't have to worry about that, he just had to integrate with him, like to me, Nico does that as well, like, Guys, if you didn't notice, remember when he was in phase, Nico was like probably the best lurker in the world. He just won fucking entry of the year at the HL TV Awards. Like he's he's actually completely revolutionized his game to me. So I also will say, of all the other players, if you look at all the other great riflers, no rifler, like there's other riflers can bring as much in this in the server with the crosshair. No one's bringing as much to the team component as Nico, though. So he does have a massive, like sort of like fucking ace up his sleeve in that regard that the other IGLs does that like if I'm comparing him to Snappy and Entz there's no mm. fucking like if uh, Nertz might be a bang of fucking rifle he isn't fucking Nico mate like you get an extra component because I agree with you Yanko even though I was actually more sceptical when he was in phase I think now it's actually it seems like actually even temperament wise it f would feel more appropriate for Nico to be more of an IGL now it feels like he's settled into that role and he sort of has figured out the balance of when to be a star and call his own play as it were and when to be actually sacrificial and help the team right he's actually got quite a fine balance I feel like now.
to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.